Hi everyone, Bob Black here with a couple of the former Richmond Spider football greats who are now both members of the New York football giants. On my right, Kerry Wynn, and on my left, Kyle Laletta. Let's start with you, Kerry. You're the veteran between these two. You've just completed your fifth year, which is hard to believe, with the Giants. Can you just give everybody an evaluation of what you thought this year was like? Now, the Giants did not have a great year as a team, but for the team and for you personally. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, first and foremost, it's a blessing to, to be here, you know, with you guys and going through my, just completing my fifth year. Um, I feel like it happened just as fast as, you know, I was at Richmond. Um, but as far as the season goes, um, it was unfortunate. Uh, we were on the, the losing end of a lot of close games. Um, but uh, it's at this point, you just got to regroup and, and hopefully next year will be a better one for us. You had a really good year individually. At least it looked that way as we watched your games on television. And as you look at the stat sheet, there are good numbers for you. How would you evaluate your year personally? Um, I feel like I did a lot of good things uh, this year. Um, I never really set goals as far as, um, you know, a, a certain statistic, how many sacks or tackles, TFLs, any of that type of stuff. really just want to go out and play best of my abilities, and I feel like I did that a lot um, this season. So I was happy about it. Hopefully free agency reflects that. All right, since you brought up free agency, that period is about to begin. You are a free agent. Um, what has that process been like, and where is it right now? Um, just a whole lot of um, patience and praying, um, just kind of giving it to God and, and letting him direct my path. That's what, he's, what I've done so far, and it's, it's got me to where I am, so, so I'll, that's what I'll continue to do. If things worked out, would you be happy to remain in a New York Giants uniform? Absolutely. I would love to be a teammate one more time, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll get us to Kyle. When you were a rookie, Kerry, you didn't play the first 11 or 12 games. You were on the inactive list, 11 games. What was that like for you? And did you give Kyle any advice about that? Because obviously he was inactive for most of the beginning of the season. I mean, the season, the NFL season works. You know, you can go 11 games without playing and, and knowing you're not going to play. And then one game you have two injuries and it's like next man up mentality. So you always got to be ready. Um, you know, I watched Kyle throughout the, you know, the season and every week he came out, you know, ready to go, ready for his number to be called. So, um, yeah. All right, before number 17 was eventually called against the Redskins, if I remember correctly, what was that like, Kyle? I mean, you were a starter throughout your entire college career, and all of a sudden, not only you're on the sideline, but you know you're not going to play in those games. What was that like? Right, I mean, it was tough. I think, uh, you know, being inactive was always, a, was always a challenge because a lot of the times, or most of the time, I didn't know until I walked into the, into the stadium whether or not I was active. So it's kind of hard to prepare yourself mentally. I mean, you know, either way, you prepare like you're the starter. You go through, um, you know, all, all week we prepare and, and uh, you know, you put yourself, you try to put yourself in the shoes, but it's tough. You know, you're not getting a lot of reps and, and uh, it's hard to just kind of settle in and, and get comfortable with it. But um, you just do it to the best of your ability. You know, I have somebody uh, like Eli Manning who's great to, to learn from. So just try to mimic um, what he does on and off the field and just try to prepare myself um, as best as, as I can. But um, like you said, it was it was tough, and and um, you know, finally I, I started to get activated a couple times towards the end of the year. But um, you know, ne next year's another year, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Well, speaking of that, how different are things right now than they were a year ago when you didn't know when you were going to be drafted, what team you were going to be playing for, how much money you were going to make, any of that, and now at least you've got an idea of what life as a professional football player is about. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, I think I'm a little bit more settled in. I feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, the offense, with the scheme, and, and just in general what it takes to be an NFL quarterback and, you know, kind of what you need to do day in and day out. Um, you know, as a rookie, I'm sure Kerry would tell you, it's kind of stressful not knowing. You know, you, 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 you kind of find out by, uh, by just doing things and, and making mistakes. And, and um, you know, I learned a lot. I made my mistakes. I, uh, you know, when I got my opportunity, I didn't play well. But um, it's just motivated me all that more to, to just keep working hard and, and um, just be ready when the next time my number's called. You know, I think... Um, you know, obviously, I didn't, I didn't do what I wanted to do the first time I got out there. But you know, I know I'm going to get another shot. So hopefully, hopefully, I can capitalize the next time I'm out there. And how did you handle that? It was tough. I mean, I was, uh, I'm, I'm as competitive as as a player as as there is out there. So it was tough for me. And and um, you know, it was a, it, we were in a blowout game when I got in, and and we still won the game. But you know, I was I was upset, obviously. Um, but you got to move on, and you got to realize that um, you know, you're you're 
the team is more important than you, and and um, you know it, it's not it's not the end all be all. Uh, one game, it, it doesn't kind of paint a picture of who you are as a player. So um, I think I've shown the coaches enough, you know, over the time that I've been there, that that I have what it takes. So um, you know, for now, I think they they believe in me, and they're and um, I'm going to get another shot. So like I said, I'm just uh, you know going to be ready when my opportunity comes the next time. As a member of the media, I'm interested in this question. I hope everybody else is as well. How demanding is the New York media? It's tough. I mean, um, and it's not just with me. I mean, you see it with anybody. I mean, uh, you know, with, with Eli Manning and people, he's getting older towards the end of his mm -hmm. career and, and uh, people are calling for him to be benched and all this. But, you know, the, the fascinating thing that I found is that when you're a member of the team, none of that matters. Nobody nobody really cares nobody really even knows half the stuff that the media is talking about so a lot of people outside will, will, will talk about it and make noise and and uh you know a lot of times people tell me things that i didn't even hear that was the first time i heard it because we're so focused on what we have going on and and um you know coach harps on it and, the, and you know the veterans tell us hey we stick together and we don't care what what they say out there you know we have a job and we have to respond to the media but at the end of the day um the players and the coaches that are in those meeting rooms and those are the only people that really know what's going on and uh, you know what, what the media has to say really doesn't pertain to us, so that's kind of how we handle it. Kerry, how about for you, how demanding is the media when they're in the locker room, post-game press conferences, at practices, all of that? I mean, it's funny, you have a, you have a great game and you have 10 people at your locker, you know, and then... Um, you you have, didn't have that at Richmond, not 10 people at your locker. <laughs> and you have a very, you know, you have an average game and nobody's there. Um, but, you know, the media, uh, especially over the years, you know, when you go, um, I don't even remember our, our record last year, uh, not this past year, but the year before that wasn't a good one. But, um, you know, they, they're, they're constantly looking for stories and they're constantly throwing bait out there for players to, to, to catch and, and to run with, you know. So um, as players, you just got to, you know, be smart, um, re res uh, resort back to um, the messages we get from our head coach uh, every morning in meetings and, and just go from there. How different was it with a new head coach, new defensive coaching staff? How did you adapt to that? Um, just had to had to go in and and um, just put your head down and, and, and get to work. You know, study your playbook. You know, the before, year before that, I was in defense for two to three years, so I got used to it coming in OTAs. It wasn't as complicated. But uh, this time around, just you know, a lot more guys just just in the meeting rooms. You know, after OTAs, after practice, and. And just uh, just getting it in, getting, getting the time in. Hey, you mentioned free agency, and we'll certainly keep an eye on what happens with Kerry Wynn. But from our perspective, down in Richmond, which is Redskins territory, what kind of player and what kind of teammate are the Redskins getting in Landon Collins? Uh, it's funny you said. I was about to say, well, they got. I don't know if they have any more money because they <laughs> they spent you know a good amount there. But um, I mean, I played you know with him his whole career there. So I mean, ever since he came in, he's been a leader and hard nose, just he's the type of guy that you want on your team. So they're very fortunate to have him. Uh, Kyle, let me ask you a similar question. What are the personalities like? You mentioned Eli Manning, but you've got Odell Beckham. You got Saquon Barkley in that offensive room. What are the personalities like amongst your offensive teammates? You know, they're, the personalities are, everybody's different, um, you know, but you know, you go back to the media and like you mentioned, I think uh, that's one thing that stands out is the media will try to portray people a certain way. And I think uh, Odell might be one of the most misunderstood people on our team because Odell, everybody loves Odell. You know, he, he, he works his butt off and uh, he's, he's respectful, he's kind, he's, he's a great teammate. Um, he comes to work every day and, and you know, I don't think there's anybody that practices as hard as Odell. I've never seen somebody that, that gives it his all in the practice field like he does. So um, Saquon, Saquon's a great, you know, Sa Sa Saquon's a great dude, and I've gotten to know him. And uh, we've, you know, because we came in the same year, and he's, uh, we've developed a good relationship together. Um, and he's, he's everything that uh, the more the media portrays of him. You know, he's, he's an all-star, mm -hmm. um, pro bowler, and, and um, you know, the sky's the limit for him. I tell him that all the time that, uh, you know, he could be one of the best to ever do it when it's all said and done. I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Eli's a great guy. Eli's taught me a lot, and um, 
he's funny. He's he's down to earth, and um, you know he's just a joy to be around. So uh, all all three of those guys are pros and and great at what they do. So you know anything that you can pick up from those type of guys is is well worth your time. Last question for both you guys. Tell us about your off season, what you've been doing, prep work, where you've been hanging out, that kind of thing, and how you're getting ready for next season. You know, I, I had a little uh, knee scope after the season, so I've been rehabbing. Um, you know, it's been taking a little bit longer than I wanted it to to recover, but, um, you know, I think I'm finally starting to turn the corner. So uh, I've been starting to progress and drop back and starting to throw, and, and I like where I'm at. You know, I'm, I'm focused and uh, I've been working hard, so uh, just going to continue to do that and, and be ready when we have to report in April. All right, Kerry, how about for you, and how much time have you spent back home in Louisa County? Um, I spent probably about a week, a week or so back there. Uh, not too much time, but um, you know, definitely got to spend some time with the family, which is always nice. I had surgery um, on my thumb, actually, uh, you know, following the season, so I was in the cast for a little bit, and um, still try to, you know, work around it and, and train around that. I recently started training Monday, uh, yesterday, so it's back to the, the hard workouts and the, and the real grind, you know. Um, and before that, you know, just you know, traveling around a little bit, going on a few vacations, so trying to enjoy myself a little bit. All right, enjoy the rest of the offseason, work hard, and we'll see you in hopefully the Giants uniform again in the fall. Kyle, Kerry, thank you very much. Appreciate it.